Okay, referring to the word tragedy, someone might ask if the first syllable is stressed. Okay, so what about the second and the third syllables? Okay, uh, if we want to say that the first syllable of the word is stressed, we can, uh, if you want, write it, we can give it this sign. Okay. What about the unstressed parts? The unstressed, the unstressed, sorry, parts of the words are given these signs. Okay, so the word tragedy is going to be written like this. Okay, it's a unit, it's a word. The first part of the word is stressed and the second two parts of the word is unstressed. Okay, these, this is the sign for the stressed word and this is the sign for unstressed words. Okay, why these... Uh, signs are important in literature because when we go to poetry we are going to pronounce words and notice uh, the unstressed and stressed syllables for certain words okay for not uh, every word but it's uh, somehow important okay each unit because poetry depends on music each unit okay here is called in poetry of course it's called a foot okay so what's the meaning of a foot a foot is a metrical unit okay that consists of stressed and unstressed what syllables okay so this is the definition of the word foot why the word here is important because we are talking about poetry we are going we are talking about meter what's the definition of the word meter then okay the word that we talked about previously you can go to page uh, to the literary glossary and go to uh, which page it's almost page 37 Okay, the definition is here. Meter is the regular and repetitive pattern of stresses in poetry. So this is again the sign of the stressed word and the sign of the unstressed, sorry, the stressed and the unstressed syllables in poetry. Okay, forgive me. Uh, this is the word that we're going to talk about now, which is iambic uh, what is the meaning of iambic iambic you can notice this sign okay according to the things that we explained here okay which is the stressed and the unstressed or the pronunciation of the words okay so the iambic is a metrical unit a metrical unit consists of what consists of two syllables so i am is a word that consists of only two syllables two syllables the first is unstressed and the second is stressed. Okay? Uh, suppose that we are writing a line in poetry. There's a kind of um, an example, I believe, on page uh, 30. Okay, which is like I rant indeed the fields and flux have charms. Okay, the first I rant stressed, stressed, or unstressed, stressed, unstressed, stressed, then unstressed, stressed again. So this is almost the same pattern. This is the way that we uh, can notice about meter. Okay, so what's about meter? Meter consists of words that are stressed and unstressed. Okay, and repetitive patterns. Repetitive means the same pattern, okay, or the same rule is repeated here, like this one. We cannot, for example, start with unstressed, stressed syllable or unit, and then move to something which is uh, different. Okay, it should be the same pattern all over the power decline. The most important thing here to know is only the
the iambic. So what do we mean by iambic when we say I am? Okay, I am means a metrical unit. Consists of two syllables. As the first, okay, is unstressed. And the second is stressed. So this is the definition of the IM. When this IM is repeated five times, for example, uh, we have a word which starts with unstressed syllable and then stressed syllable. Okay, this is a unit, this is a foot, and then another unit. Okay, which also begins with unstressed syllable and then the stressed syllable. This is a second unit or a second foot. A third one, okay, similar. A fourth one and then a fifth. Okay, the number of foot or feet, sorry, that we have here is five. We have five similar patterns starting with unstressed syllable and then move to a stressed syllable. When the I am, this is an I am, when the I am is repeated five times, we go to the meter, which is pentameter. Penta means five, okay? In Latin numbers, penta refers to five. This is why it's called the pentameter. So this is only one type of meters. There are more than one type of meter here and one uh, more than one type of foot, but Again, the most important one that we are going to focus upon or highlight is the iambic pentameter, uh, the iambic, sorry, and pentameter, which makes a poetic line like here, okay? So this line consists of how many feet? This line consists of five, okay, feet, uh, following the same pattern, which is unstressed, stressed, unstressed, stressed, okay, we, uh, the repetitive pattern, okay, which is almost five times is called, again, pentameter so what's pentameter pentameter is a meter consisting of five metrical units following the uh, metrical structure or the uh, division of unstressed and stressed syllables okay this is about iampic pentameter this is the thing that we have to explain on page 29 uh, I believe that there's also a definition here for the word uh, foot so you can you can notice okay uh, which is written here a foot which is an individual pattern of stress or as i defined it uh, before here which is a metrical unit so what's a foot a foot is a metrical unit consists of stressed and unstressed syllables okay for the iron uh, iron is a foot or a metrical unit that consists of only two syllables. The first is unstressed and the second is stressed. So it depends on the order of the words and the order of the syllables and the way that we pronounce uh, the word. The definition of, again, I am, or the word I am big, is a metrical unit. consists of two syllables. The first is unstressed and the second is stressed. Okay, so this is the definition of what? This is the definition of the oyen. Metrical unit consists of two syllables. The first is unstressed and the second is stressed. Okay, there's an example in the book uh, for stressed and unstressed words, like the words, uh, for, example, for example, here, unrest, defeat. Okay, uh, the focus or the stress is on the second syllable, but not the first syllable. 
Okay, and the most important part, by the way, just to make it brief or short, not to make things more complicated or complicated for you, uh, is to know that each word uh, consists of syllables. It consists of stressed and unstressed syllables. Okay, what is important here is the word iambic. You have to notice or to know the definition of the word iambic and the way that we link it to the word pentameter. What do we mean by penta? Penta is the repetition of a pattern five times okay in a line okay so again this is the meaning of the word penta that each foot is repeated five times okay the foot that we are talking about here is the iamp this is why we linked okay the iamp to make a meter that consists of iambic pentameter iamp means the unstressed stressed syllables repeated five times in a poetic line and this is the rule that Shakespeare followed in his sonnets which is going to be explained later when we talk about uh, sonnet 18 by Shakespeare uh, but this is going to be in a separate video uh, okay talking about uh, the word rhyme okay what do I mean by rhyme Rhyme is a kind of um, also repetition, but repetition of the same sound at the end, okay, of each word. Uh, for example, we can go to page, okay, which page is almost there. It's called Paltrits and Sydney. This is a sonnet, okay? When we say that, for example, the word remedy with, goes with the word I, for example, the word part goes with the word heart, this kind of a musical harmony, okay? Almost in the end, or repetition of the same sound, in the end of poetic line is the rhyme. Mine and define, for example, account and uh, surmount. Uh, indeed and I breathe, okay? These are the... The important points to know about rhyme so when we say what is the meaning of the word rhyme rhyme is the repetition of similar sounds usually at the end of a poetic line okay so it's repetition of similar sounds usually at the end of a poetic line this is a quick uh, definition of the word rhyme okay this is also a definition here from the book you can underline it rhyme is the re repetition of certain sounds regular at regular intervals and usually at the end of lines of poetry okay so this is the definition we can underline it together or highlight it okay that's enough okay to know that it's almost up to you no need to continue so rhyme is the repetition of certain sounds at regular intervals and usually at the end of lines of poetry okay no need to know anything more than this and the last thing that we are going to talk about is for today is diction diction as you know and we read it before uh, almost i believe many times uh, when we talk about uh, or when we talked about fiction but this time it's somehow different uh, it's a choice of words for the poet not an author or a short story writer this time it's a poet for the poet it's a choice of words vocabulary okay in theory it applies to poets dramatists and novelists as we said okay the most important point that you should know is that diction can be it has types the first type is called archaic okay this is the first word what do i mean by the word archaic it's use of old-fashioned words okay old fashioned words or words no longer in common use this is one type of diction 
The second type of diction is colloquial. What do I mean by colloquial? Like everyday speech. Okay, this is the second type of diction. The third type of diction is refined, elegant, okay? Uh, style or diction. Uh, and that's I think which uses exalted language or exalted vocabulary, exalted diction. So these are the three types that we should know when we talk about poetic diction, okay? Uh, I hope that things are clear for you. I hope that uh, I didn't make things complicated. The only, again, uh, things that you should know is the word foot. What do I mean by foot? Or what do I mean when we say uh, iambic? It's a metrical unit consists of two syllables. The first is unstressed and the second is stressed. When we link it to the word pentameter, so iambic, or this uh, type of a metrical unit is repeated five times, okay, in a line of poetry. What do we mean by rhyme? And we have assigned it. Rhyme is repetition of certain sounds at regular intervals and usually at the end of a poetic line. And the last thing is diction. Diction consists, poetic diction consists of three types. Depends on the uh, style of the author, either archaic, sorry, it might be archaic, it might be... Uh, colloquial or it can be refined, elegant and exalted.